Welcome to Communications Network 2. In today's lecture, we are going to continue to our introduction to software defined radio. We are going to implement a QPSK transceiver in gaining radio. So basically, what we can present today to you is the environment that is called Guinea Radio Companion. We are going to run some simulations and we are going to explain to you how you could eventually implement this code using the real hardware device. So let's going to start first understanding what is QPSK. As we have reviewed in our lecture, QPSK is a digital modulation scheme that consists of four points on the constellation diagram as we can see right here we dispose of one one zero one zero zero one zero and with this kind of modulation scheme we can encode two bits per symbol as it is shown in the great coding to minimize error rate so basically we can just change one bit at upon and yeah in this way we can really reduce the BER so let's going to understand how the transmitter and the receiver work here we have a binary stream this binary stream can come from any digital source uh, what we are going to do is to use a demultiplexer to separate the odd bits from the even bits of this bit stream. So basically, we are going to have the in phase signal and the quadrature signal completely separated. And if we take a look to the uh, bits that doesn't have that are not highlighted with red, we can see all of them right here in the upper part while the even bits are at the bottom. Then what we are going to do is a non-return to zero encoding that basically is going to transform this digital signal into analog signal that is going to assign a positive value for the bits that are represented by one and a negative value to the bits that are represented by zero. Then we are going to put these analog signals inside of a modulated signal by using a carrier signal, a high frequency carrier signal. And then what we are going to do is to transmit or propagate this QPS signal in every in any medium. It can be air. At the receiver side, on the other hand, when we receive the signal we are going to use a match filters that and with these match filters what we are going to do is to remove the carrier signal and then we are going to use probabilities to make decisions about the received bits that we have then this when we detect the or we yeah, when we detect or we have made decisions about the bits that we receive, then we can use a multiplexer again and we recover our bit string. Now, let's go to assume that you have an installed Gain Radio Companion. So it's really easy in Linux distribution systems to um, install this this application. For instance, as I am using uh, Ubuntu, the 18.4 version. So if you have this version of any other Ubuntu version, or even if you are using other Linux distribution, so you can basically install this program with the following command. You introduce your password right here. 
And as you can see here, uh, as I already installed my program, I currently have the version 3.7.11. I can prove that this is the, the current version that I have installed by using the following command companion version. What companion means is that is the guinea radio, but the guinea companion implies is the graphical interface, graphical user interface. So we can invoke or execute this program by just typing guinea radio companion and a new window is going to pop up and we are going to be able to start with our design. As you can see here, Gaining Radio is a really friendly environment with many um, building blocks and each building block has different functionalities. Here we dispose of general information where the user can assign a name, can assign a sample rate, a device name, there are other advanced options like the alias and the affinity that in this case we are not really going to use for our purpose. And finally, we have the documentation where the user can know what is going to be the, the function or the functionality of each block. Good. So let's go to first uh, create one one file that on we are going as you can see here we have different types of files that we can create. We can create a Qt GUI or we can also create the WX GUI or we can not have any GUI at all and we can do this kind of uh, processing directly from the terminal but for the purpose of this tutorial what we are going to do is to use the Q2 GUI and we are going to save this um, this file in my case what I'm going I have created a folder that I call QPSK transceiver and here we are going to call it transceiver dot GRC GRC are the gain your radio files that are generated by default and we can I'm going to save this as you can see here what it's going to tell us this bar is the name of the file that we are going to use for this implementation and the directory where this file is located or stored. Good. Here, as I, as I have already mentioned before, we have different building blocks that we can use to implement in different digital communications applications. However, one of the most important for us is this called UHD. Why? Because basically those two blocks are going to be the ones that we can use to employ our USRP devices. So when we double click on each block, what we are going to see right here is that we have different parameters. So every USRP normally has an, a device address. When you install the UHD, the UHD driver in your host machine, basically what you are going to say is that when you plug in your USRP, then this USRP are going to be recognized by the host computer via an IP address or a device address, as we can see here. In this case, we don't dispose 
of the hardware itself. But what is really remarkable in this stage is to see how easy we can really imply or we can really use our hardware to transmit and receive data. Since basically all the signal processing operations are performed in our host computer. Basically, as I have already mentioned previously in our lecture, what we do is that we do the computation of our digital processing algorithms in our host computer. And then what we do is to transmit this information via USB or Ethernet to the USRP. And then the USRP is programmed, the internal or the built-in FPGA of the USRP is programmed and the radio frequency front end is uh, the settings of the radio frequency uh, front end are set and we can really start the communication between devices. Good. So as I mentioned, we are going to continue without those building blocks. Why? Because we don't dispose in this tutorial of the real hardware. In the further uh, tutorials, we can really see what is going to be the outcome that we obtain from the usage of the real hardware itself. So as we can see what from our example, what we need to generate is a bit stream. And to do this, what we are going to call here is a building block that we are going to denominate random source. And let's go to evaluate what are the parameters or properties that this block is offering to us. As you can see here, it has an ID, it has an auto output type, as uh, has a minimum value, and it's a maximum value, uh, the number of sample poles that we want to transmit. And uh, here, what we can define is that once we reach the maximum of the number of sample poles, we want to repeat this transmission or not. By default, we say yes, and we are going to transmit um, the number of samples periodically. So for the purpose of this tutorial, we, we have to consider all the building blocks in the future. And one of them is going to be the constellation modulation block. Constellation modulator block. Why? Because what we want to do is to put our bit stream into the into into a constellation to be transmitted to be transmitted as we have seen previously in our example. And in QPSK we have four different constellations. However, as you can see right here, it has an input and an output. The input is in purple color and the output is in blue code. What does it mean? What it means is the type of data that it can receive as input and as an output. In this case, the input can receive one byte. It means A bits. As a consequence, we have to adapt our random source to match the, that the output of the random source building block matches the input of the constellation modulator constellation building block. And how we can do this? Well, what we are going to say is that the maximum value that this block can have is 256. Why? It represents 2 to the power of 8. 2 to the power of 8 is 256. So the maximum, uh, the there, there is the maximum amount of values that we can represent in one byte. And the output type that we are going to select is 
the byte itself. Then we apply OK. And as you can see right here, the output of our random source has turned from purple to from green to purple. And then we can just do the connection of two building blocks. In this stage, we are going to require of a throttle block and the function of throttle is basically it's just a buffer that we use to maintain our signal but let's go to examine the documentation about the constellation mod modulator so as I mentioned before, the input is a byte stream and the output is a complex modulated signal at baseband. What is the translation of this in our symbol? It's exactly that. We are just right here in our implementation. In this stage, what we have is that our baseband signal is a uh, modulated signal that then we have to transform or by using the encoding by putting inside a current signal to do the transmission so let's go to as we are going to use uh, qpsk so we have to call the constellation QPSK and the number of samples per symbol that we have to assign is of course 4. As you can see here we have this title in red and what it does represent to us is that we still require to assign new parameters to make this this uh, this block to function and there is a constellation there is a block called constellation object red object in which we are going to establish for instance what is, what is the symbol map that we want to have and what are the constellation points many parameters that are required during the modulation between the constellation modulator. So we are going to call it instead of variable constellation direct zero, we are going to call it QPSK. And uh, look at this. As soon as we have done this, what we obtain is that our red letters are transformed back again to black so now what we have to do is to assign the symbol map in our case what we are going to establish that we are going to the our symbols are going to be mapped to 0 1 2 and 3 and the constellation points that we are going to use instead of having these these points into the axis of our diagram what we want to do it is to have it in every um, every uh, 45 degrees so we have 45, 135, 235, and then 315 degrees plus 0 0.7. Then 